Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of Math Behind the Modules. Today we're doing Lesson 12, Division of Integers. Remember, an integer is a positive and negative number, not a decimal and not a fraction. So today we're going to be recalling that the relationship between multiplication and division, okay, there is a relationship between multiplication and division. Record equations from exercise one on the left. So in class, they were required to pick a card and go around the classroom and match their card with integers that were on the same. That were the same on other students' cards. I get it in groups that had the same integers. So here was an example. It would have been one card that was a 4 times 6 equals 24. It would have been a 6 times 4 equals 24. It would have been a 24 divided by 6 equals 4 card, and a 24 divided by 4 equals 6 card. These four students would have gotten together, listed their four equations in the equations box, and then I would have directed the students to construct three similar integer multiplication problems. Two problems using one negative number as a factor and one with both negative. So we would have written negative 6 times 4, one negative, one positive, equals negative 24. Or 4 times negative 6 equals negative 24. Then we would have made the 4 negative. And then finally make them both negative 4 times negative 6 equals 24, or negative 6 times negative 4 equals 24. So those were the three equations that we were supposed to come up with, and then rearranging each one of them. So then we end up with 6. Okay, so after that example is done, then we'll do it again. Now they say record your group's number sentences in the spaces on the left below. And all we're going to do is repeat what's here. So 4 times 6 equals 24. 6 times 4 equals 24. 24 divided by 6 equals 4. 24 divided by 4 equals 6. Now, using the integer multiplication facts in their integer bubble to create six related integer division facts, group members should discuss the inverse relationship and the resulting division facts must be true based on each multiplication equation. Okay, so we need to make one negative. So let's start with negative 6 times 4. That's going to equal negative 24. Then we're going to then take that and turn it into a division problem. So negative 24 equals, or I'm sorry, divided by. Negative 24 divided by negative 6 equals 4. We also could have written negative 24 divided by 4. Equals negative 6. Then how about negative 4 times 6 equals negative 24. Now the 4 is negative and the 6 is positive. Here the negative 6 is positive. The 4 was or negative and the 4 was positive. So now we have negative 4 times positive 6, and that equals negative 24. We're going to do two division problems now. So we're going to get negative 24 and divide it by negative 4, which is 6. Take negative 24 and divide it by 6 and get negative 4. And then finally, we're going to make both 4 and the 6 negative. So if I say negative 4 
times negative 6. That equals... And then we could take 24 divided by negative 4, and that equals negative 6. And then finally, 24 divided by negative 6, and that equals negative 4. Now it's asking questions about this. A. List examples of division problems that produced a quotient that is a negative number. Examples of division problems that produced a negative number. So if I go back to my bubble here. Okay, here's a division problem, there's a negative quotient. There's a division problem, negative quotient. Negative, negative. So there's one, two, three, four. So we list those. So it's going to be negative 24 divided by 4 equals negative 6. Negative 24 divided by 6 equals negative 4. 24 divided by negative 4 equals negative 6. 24 divided by negative 6 equals negative If the quotient is negative, is a negative number, negative the quotient is what we get when we divide. What must be true about the signs of the division, of, of the dividend and the divisor? So here's the dividend, it's negative. Here's the divisor, it's positive. Negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. So the quotient is a negative number. What must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? Must be positive and one must be C. Right. List your examples of division problems that produced a quotient that is a positive. So if I go back, I want to look at my quotients that were positive here. And here's one. Here's one. And that's it. There's two up here. There's two. Okay. So examples that produce positive were negative 24 divided by negative 4 equals 6. 24 divided by 4 equals 6. Negative 24 divided by negative 6 equals 4. 24 divided by 6 equals 6. Okay, so there's examples in the division problem that produce a quotient that is positive. So then it asks, if the quotient is a positive number, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? So the dividend is negative and the divisor is negative. Dividend is positive, divisor is positive. So what must be true about the signs? They must both be positive or both negative. So, rule for dividing two integers. A quotient is negative if the divisor and the dividend have different signs. A quotient is positive if the divisor and the dividend have same signs. Exercise 2. In the quotient of two integers, is the quotient of two integers always an integer? 
use the workspace below to create portions of integers. Answer the question. Use the examples of the counter or a counter example. A counter example is an example that makes the statement false. To support your point. So if I say negative 24 divided by 6 equals negative 4, that's an integer quotient. But if I take 6 divided by negative 24, I get 6 over negative 24, which equals 1 over negative 4, which is the same as negative 1 fourth. 1 fourth is not a whole number or an integer because it's a fraction. 1 fourth is 0.25. An integer cannot be a decimal or a fraction. So this is a non-integer function. That is called a counter example. Okay, so now answer the question. It says, is the quotient of two integers always an integer? Okay. Is the quotient of two integers, six is an integer, negative 24 is an integer, but the quotient knows not. So the answer is no. Okay, and then just go on to explain. If this is an integer, and so what ends up being the case, in order to get an integer quotient, what you're dividing by, your divisor, has to be a factor of the dividend. Okay. I'm not going to write out all the above. Okay, so here's the answer. I've been a lot to write with a marker. I wouldn't have been able to do it, so I just brought this in. So the answer is no. Quotients of integers are not always integers. In my first example above, negative 24 divided by 6 yields an integer quotient of negative 4. However, when I switch the divisor and dividend, that quotient divides a number with a smaller absolute value by a number with a greater absolute value, making the quotient a rational number between negative 1 and 1. In dividing 6 divided by negative 24, the quotient is 6 over negative 24, which equals negative 1 4. Okay, negative 1 quarter is not an integer because the opposite value of, because, but it is the opposite value of the fraction 1 4. This counter example shows that quotients of integers are not integers. Exercise 3. Different representation of the same quotient. Are the answers to the three quotients below the same or different? Why or why not? Okay, so now we need to answer these questions. So, negative 14 divided by 7 equals negative divided by positive is negative. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Positive divided by a negative is negative, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. This is saying a negative of 14 divided by 7, which is 2, so that is also negative 2. So are the answers to the three quotients below the same or different? They are the same. Why or why not? Well, it's why is because we're taking a negative divided by a positive, a positive divided by a negative. For two positives, basically that's kind of times negative 1. So we end up with negative, negative, and negative. So the answers to the problems are the same. Negative 2 in part C is the negative in front of the parentheses. Changes the value inside the parentheses to its opposite. The value in the parentheses is 2, and the opposite of 2 is negative 2. So this negative sign outside will make the quotient opposite. That's the end of this lesson. Go to your mind.